Welcome all. In this video, we're just going to take a quick look at UPX and talk about the easy way to unpack UPX and then talk about the slightly more complicated way, particularly if you find um, someone who's maybe modified the UPX packer so that when you use the easy way, it says that it can actually unpack it for you. Now, we'll start off with a sample program, as you can see here. Very simple. It just prints hello world when you run it. So from this C file, I'll open my developer command prompt which um, I already have open, yes. And we can just use the cl command hello.c. That'll provide us with hello.exe. And when we run it then or execute it, you can see there is, of course, our message, hello world. So there's a few things that I want to use um, Detected Easy and PE Studio to look at in terms of the structure, the PE file format for this particular executable. You'll notice things like our entry point. That'll play a factor here just a little bit later in the video. We, we know that it's going to, to print the, the string, hello world. So if we look for that as a string, we should be able to find it. There it is. Um, we also want to take a look at the memory map. And as you can see here, the memory map feature in Detected Easy has the raw offset. So that's the offset in the file if we were looking at it, for example, in a hex editor. And then we have the virtual address. And this is where you would expect to see that section or that segment mapped into memory. So we have things like .text, .rdata, .data, .reloc, .relocation, and those are all fairly common names, particularly when using um, a Microsoft compiler. So nothing too out of the ordinary there. Uh, if we take a look at this using PE Studio, uh, just open that file. If we look at the sections here, I think just give it a second. And what you'll notice is some of the same information. Of course, we have the same sections. Um, we have the entry point 125B that is a virtual offset. So that virtual offset will be utilized once the executable is loaded into memory and that will land us into the segment. Um, of course, this segment or this section the, the, at uh, an offset of 1000 hex. Now you'll notice things also like the raw address. So this section is at a raw address of plus 400 hex. This is at DC 00 hex. This is at 13A 00 hex. It makes sense that each section is going to be a little bit further than the previous, and that is to include the size, um, because they're going to they're not going to want to overlap. Uh, that would also stand to reason then, when these are mapped into memory, that a very similar thing will happen. They're at slightly larger offsets in the virtual memory mapping, um, but they're still going to, you're going to find them, you know, being slightly separated and then sort of laid out in, in, a, in a more or less sequential fashion. Okay, so what about UPX? Well, if we run the UPX executable without any arguments, you'll get some basic help information, as you can see here. Now, I'm not going to get into all the details as to all, what all the different options mean. But if we want to pack something, we just need to simply provide the um, name of the executable. And if we use the dash O argument, that's just going to allow me to, let's call this hello um, upx.exe. So that'll just allow, allow me to define a different name so that it doesn't overwrite the original executable. That way we can keep these two binaries sort of separated. Now, uh, if all goes well, we'll have a message here similar to that. It was able to pack one, pack one file. And most importantly, when we go to run that original, well, our packed file, we get the same or that original behavior. So in this case, the simple hello world. Now, how does this change? Well, let's look at hello dump. First, we'll stop with detect, or start with detected easy. Go to strings. As you might suspect, we can't find our hello world string because our original executable has now been compressed and, and packed inside of a new executable. So we can't really see any information about that original executable, at least not at this level of analysis that we're doing. We can't see the imports, we're not seeing the strings. And in order to do that, we want to unpack it. And that's the main reason that malware authors use packing is to at least provide some layer of obfuscation, some layer of protection as they're trying to distribute their binaries. Um, legitimate software companies could do the same. UPX can provide compression, so it can make distributing an executable smaller. It can also provide a, you know, arguably thin layer, but a, a layer of protection as well. So there are a handful of reasons that, that one might choose malicious and non-malicious purposes to use something like UPX. Okay, so that's just kind of real quick theory behind it. 
um, you'll notice our entry point is much different now, 4195C0. And if we look at a memory map, you'll also see that our sections, of course, are quite different. And there also is a pretty big tell here. Our section names have UPX1, UPX2, and that's a pretty big tell for something that's packed with UPX. Is by, by default, that's the behavior that UPX provides, and and, it, and there isn't any way, at least through the command line arguments that I've seen, and I don't, I don't use UPX all that often, um, there isn't a way to change that. Now, these names are human readable, so I would imagine that sort of after the fact we could change them, but uh, maybe we'll explore that in another video at another time. Okay, if we move over to PE Studio, I'm just going to launch a new instance of it. Let's see if we can't get this to show up. And we'll open our freshly packed executable. You can see there's a signature. So if you're interested in the signatures, both Detected Easy, as you can see, Detected Easy has its signature, as well as PE Studio. Um, but what, what I really wanted to point out here was just the sections. And PE Studio marks this, this binary as self-modifying. And if you look at the sections, you'll see our entry point is in UPX1. And let's bounce back to Detected Easy real quick and take a look at the entropy. All right, so there's UPX1, but we're pretty high. I didn't do the calculation beforehand, but we're pretty high. It would, it would make sense that we're probably somewhere here for the unpacking process. Um, and UPX2, a small section. I actually don't know what that's for off the top of my head. And again, to try to keep this video short, I didn't dig in too much to it. Um, so if anybody has any insight there that they want to share, please drop a comment in. That'd be you know greatly appreciated, and you know love to learn from all of you uh, that that take time to watch these videos. Um, so if we go back now to PE Studio, uh, here you can see, you know, UPX0, UPX1, UPX2. This is one more of those points where I find as I prepare for these videos, I, I try to have answers for, for everything. But in doing so, then I end up taking a topic that I could maybe cover in five minutes and it turns into a 45 minute video. So why does this particular tool have UPX0, UPX1, UPX2, where Detected Easy only had UPX1 and UPX2? I don't know off the top of my head. I have some theories and you'll probably, and I'll, and I'll try to fill those in right now. Um, so what you'll notice is, of course, our entry point is in our UPX1 section, as we were discussing. Um, this has a raw address of 400 hex, as does our UPX0, 400 hex. This has a raw size of zero bytes because it has, it, it's, it, you know, it looks like it's likely going to be the section that data is going to be, or unpacked executable is gonna be copied into. Whereas our UPX1, it has a raw size of AA00 bytes. So there's some actual data there. When we look at the virtual address, this will be mapped to 1000 hex. This will be mapped to F000 hex. And you'll notice this, that both of these have a, a substantial amount of bytes. And so not only is this self-modifying in that I believe the reason it's saying self-modifying is that it's, it's modifying this location, um, although it's gonna be done in memory, it's also because this has a, a, an empty raw section there's no data in it right now but it appears that there will be data in it during execution so those are the two two primary reasons um, without getting into all of the details as to how exactly this is mapped out in the pe file so that's the big picture right we can anticipate just based off of looking at the sections looking at the raw versus the virtual size that you know likely something's going to get unpacked it's going to be into the section in this case called upx0 so what i can use that for is not only to help identify potential signs of packing, not just with UPX, but with other packers. But then also what we can look for um, is when we see a transition in the code to our section called UPX0, something that's going to be in this range of a thousand hex from the image base. Okay, so what's the easy way to unpack all this? Well, we can just use UPX, right? So we can say UPX-D, hello, Oops, I gotta go to the right location. Hello, um, upx.exe, and I will define a new file. We'll call it here, or we'll, we'll, we'll drop it here in this directory. We'll call this hello dump.exe. And if we run hello dump.exe, you'll see, okay, yeah, unpacked one file and it worked. 
right? So that's the easy, that's the easy solution. You know, first thing is if I come across something that's packed with UPX, I use UPX to unpack it. Now I can take that unpacked executable and do my actual analysis. Um, there's plenty of versions of UPX that are modified though. And so it might not be that easy in which case you might have to do a little bit more digging. And that's where the last few minutes of this video are going to go. So in order to do that, and let's just go to hello UPX. Okay. Sorry. These windows are a little off. I think just in adjusting the font size and everything. Um, I just skipped that dialogue. You know what? Let's, let's reopen this. So I'm not going to save that database that way. We'll get that dialogue to open up again. Okay, so on occasion, when you're opening an executable, particularly one that's packed or, or, or you know modified in some way, that's um, well, that Ida is unable to look at the imports, then it may give you this message. So this is another indication. This is a sign from Ida that you know the the, the binary that you're looking at. There's probably something going on with packing or obfuscation. Now, certainly that's the case here because we know it's been packed with UPX. Okay. Um, I'm going to just make a few adjustments so that's a little bit easier for us to see. I'm also going to add line prefixes. And you'll notice, just as we already observed, our entry point here is in our UPX1 section. There's the address as noted and detected easy. We could have gotten the same information from PE Studio. Um, but, you know, do we want to spend time looking at the logic here? Now, you know, UPX is one of those kind of special cases in a way that, that since it's an open source project, we could go and grab the source code. And I certainly would, would look at that if that was available and I was really interested in figuring out how UPX works, but really not that interested in it. I really, I just really want to get to the next stage where something, you know, where the thing that I'm after to analyze is, is actually unpacked. Um, now, my theory is that um, one of the first things I look for is try to find where the function ends and look for ways and that would indicate a one-way flow. In this case, there is clearly a one-way flow and that we have an unconditional jump to this location and this address 40125B also happens to be, go back to our original executable, the entry point for our original executable 40125B. So what that means is that we could try to figure out the logic, um, especially you know if it's modified or if we're dealing with a different packer. Again, this is sort of the same approach I take for anything that I, I suspect to be packed and looking for these one-way flows. A push ret is another, another example and that a return instruction takes whatever's on top of the stack and returns to it. So if we're pushing an argument right before a ret, then it's going to return to that address and likely not come back to whatever function was originally called that you know eventually came to that return. Um, if we go to this location, you'll see, of course, nothing's there because the unpacking process has not been complete. Um, but what we do know now is that if we wanted to, say, uh, open this up in a debugger, we could set a breakpoint on this on this address, well, I guess it's all the same at the end there, um, on that address, and then dump it from memory. So in order to do that, um, I usually use x32 debug, and this is one of those applications that I don't have mapped into my whatever that thing that Windows is when you type it in. Um, we'll do the 32-bit version of x32. Now, why x32 and not WinDebug or, or, or some other debugger? Um, because of Skyla, and we'll see, you'll see that, how that works in just a second. Okay, so let's open our Hello UPX binary. Um, first things first, we have to figure out where this is in memory. So we can go to the memory map, hello underscore UPX dot XE. We have a base address of BA0000. So if I want to set a breakpoint on the address that I identified in IDA, 1974. What I need is the offset from the image base, and Ida will use the image base to find in the PE file. Oftentimes, that's 400,000 hex. That's just the default that most compilers use. So from 400,000 hex, it's pretty simple. If we were to subtract that from this address, we just have a raw offset of 19774. Okay, now you could probably do the math here in your head, even though it's hex math, um, but I'm going to make sure that I don't mess it up and... Uh, as you can see, I guess I already, it already caught the breakpoint from the last time. 
um, and just have it have have X32 debug do the math for me. That way I don't mess it up. So there's our address, our breakpoint address, B, BB9774. And we can see that it is a jump to BA125B. So that is exactly what we want to see. Now we can go to our CPU window, type G for go. This is the entry breakpoint. So by default, X32 debug will break on load, break on entry. I can go one more time. Here's our jump. Now we can follow that. And now we're into the unpacked executable. So now the unpacked executable is going to begin execution. So we could actually continue to debug it here. Or what we could use is Skyla. If that's how you pronounce it, I don't know. That's just how I pronounced it. I've been trying to figure that out for years. Um, but we can use this tool. It's built in. And we've already selected the executable that we want to essentially dump this, this, this PE file from memory. Um, this oftentimes will update the entry point. So we, we want it to, the, to identify the new entry point, which is BA125B. And then the biggest thing about um, you know, dumping from memory, there's, there's really two things, is that making sure that, that when it's dumped from memory that you have a valid PE file, that the imports are all resolved, um, and also that, you know, think about when a PE file is in memory, every, all the sections are mapped to their virtual offsets or virtual addresses. When we dump it to disk and then we, we give it to a tool like IDA, we have to realign everything so that it's back to those raw offsets. So instead of being, for example, the text section being at 1,000 hex from the image base, it needs to be at 400 hex from the base of the file when it's on disk. So, of course, you could try to do that manually, um, but the tool like Skyla really does help with that. Now, in, for this particular example, I've been getting this error. And uh, I, even though you can delete those nodes, um, when you go to actually run the dumped file, it doesn't work. And that's unfortunate because oftentimes when I have something dumped, um, I want to be able to run it. My workaround, because I don't really want to spend the time figuring out how to fix whatever issue I'm dealing with, and I did try a little bit, um, is that, well, I can, I'm, I can still debug it here, right? I, I have to just go through the process of getting to the entry point, and, and fortunately with UPX, that's relatively straightforward. But we did the IAT, the import address table auto search, we got the imports, so looks like we're good to go. Now we can say, please dump this file and oftentimes you'll have to se select the fixed dump from the file that you just dumped. And now you'll see in the output window, we have an underscore SCY.exe. Okay, so now we're done with that. We're done with X32 debug. Oop, I didn't want to restart. I just want to exit. All right, so is it going to be a perfect, pristine, exactly as the original? No, absolutely not. I don't expect it to, but a good chunk of the structure is there. The, you know, the image base, it took what was in memory. Maybe that's part of the problem. I tried adjusting it. It didn't work. I didn't want to dig any deeper because again, there's, there's so many different rabbit holes that you can go down throughout the day. Um, if you're not, if you're not careful and I am as inquisitive as they come. Um, but even I have to say, okay, <laughs> enough's enough. Um, we have the, um, let's see here, our strings. Okay. So these look a little bit better. There's our hello world. Um, if we wanted to, we could take this, let's open it up in IDA. I don't need to save this database. We didn't open the original, so this might, you know, you might not recognize everything right off the bat, but you'll see IDA identifies main for us. Um, and you know, this is our call to, to puts essentially with our string hello world. So we could at least do some of the investigations here in IDA if we wanted to as well as the you know, sort of the cheater workaround that I mentioned earlier um, with the debugging. So um, I have encountered modified UPX in the wild. I have encountered modified UPX at job interviews. Uh, and so hopefully this is helpful just to give you sort of a basic understanding as we're kind of building upon in, in previous videos, the whole concept of packing and obfuscation, some of the techniques I use, some of the basic techniques I use, and then some of the different tools as well to help with that you know, that analysis and, and getting to a point where I can unpack the samples that I'm interested in investigating. Um, again, uh, 
if you have any questions, any comments, any insights or knowledge you'd like to share, please feel free. Comments are open. Love to hear from you. Otherwise, stay tuned. Um, lots more videos to come.